Good morning. And welcome to Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. We're really glad that you're able to spend some time with us in worship. As we gather together, everything that we're going to project or broadcast is covered under one of these two licenses, and we announce them every Sunday to kind of try to stay on the proper side of copyright things. The first one is CCLI, and its number is Charlie Sierra, Papa Lima, 113699. The other one is called One License, and its number is Alpha 727787. Let's join together in our territorial acknowledgement. Hadi, welcome in the name of the Christ. Welcome to this place of worship situated on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Tene people. Welcome to this place of blessing, this space of grace, and this holy sanctuary, this place where we discern how to live into the way of Jesus. Be welcome. Be a blessing. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our life and ministry together, otherwise known as the announcements. So if you have one, you just need to do what Judy does. Okay. Silent auction is next Sunday. Can you believe it? Please, if you've got a donation that you want to make, Fill out a donation slip, which is in the left-hand pocket of the poster out in the narthex, and then put it in the right-hand pocket. When it's completed, it helps us do all our paperwork. We're actually doing a work bee on Wednesday at 9 in the morning, 9.30 in the morning. So the more slips, at least, that we have done up by that time, the better it is, because we can be organized and not trying to do everything at the last minute. Uh, Bears for Harmony House is still ongoing. We've got quite a collection going. Um, we could use some more. I'm useless. I cannot make any more bears. So, <laughs> but if you can, please do. The other thing is that we have reinstated the flower chart. It's on the bulletin board out in the narthex. If you would like to bring flowers to commemorate someone or something like that, just fill your name in on a spot. On a spot. We've got um, another list there for flowers that you're particularly allergic to. So right now we've been asked to not do any Easter lilies and not do any lilacs because we've got people that are really, really allergic. No lilacs, no lilacs. Reverend Bob says no lilacs. Um, so that's it, please think about doing that. I'm also Judy, Judy from Outreach, and look at this lovely hat that was donated. Uh, it will keep somebody dry this summer. We're always collecting in this basket, which Reverend Vanna will display. We're collecting ball caps. Uh, we're collecting ponchos, rain jackets. And remember the sock collection back in October, November? I'm almost out of socks. And next month I'll have to buy more. Except I think some came in today. So if you're going through the sock drawer at home, or if you're going through your mitts and toques and putting those away, bring them along and we'll give them away next fall, if not sooner. Uh, the other thing to, is today is uh, soup, and, soup Kitchen Day, and so after the service, you're welcome to join Vicki and crew in the kitchen, which is, can't see, can't see past the plant, uh, which is right over here, and uh, no experience necessary. You will be given a workstation and instructions and food safe procedures will be followed. We're good for downtown. We have enough people downtown, but we can always use help after the service. Okay. 
Judy brings up a good point. Maybe bring a hat next week for church for another reason. Um, So I'm Shannon from Care of Creation, and uh, next Sunday is also our community cleanup. So we'll be uh, picking up garbage around from here to the Rainbow Park and back uh, from one till three after the silent auction, after your shortbread. And um, we'll provide bags, gloves, granola bars, and water. What you might want to bring or be prepared for is clothes that you don't mind getting just a little bit dirty, a picker-upper thingy, uh, which I had last year and it came in kind of handy. You can purchase them at Princess Auto for a very reasonable price if you don't already have them, a picker-upper thingy, which is one of those trigger things that extends your reach by about two feet. Um, A refillable water bottle and maybe some lunchable food. So we hope a few people can make it uh, and help us out. Thanks. Good morning, my name is Doug. I'm with the uh, Finance Committee, so we want to give you a quick uh, um, request from the Finance Committee. We are looking for counters. Um, We will help train you for counting if you haven't, you know, learned how to count yet, but we can train you to do that kind of stuff. It's a fairly um, straightforward position nowadays. We um, uh, only do the counting of the plate that comes on Sundays. So um, if you've done it in the past, it does not take very long either. So if you're interested, just let myself or anybody else in the finance committee know, and we'd love to have you come out and help us with the counting after church. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. So the first one is a celebration of life for Pearl Blood is coming up uh, next Friday, or sorry, yeah, Friday after next on the 26th at 1 p.m. Uh, it'll also be uh, live streamed, of course, so if you can't uh, make it but you want to still join and with the family as part of that special service, then you can do that via live stream as well. That might be the only one that you have back there for slides. So, two things. If you uh, haven't been paying attention, (laughs) it's playoff season. If you really haven't been paying attention, whoops, we had two back-to-back shutouts Friday and Saturday night. Uh, The Prince George Cougars, I think, are playing some of the best hockey that you can watch, period any league, anywhere. Uh, They're doing really, really great. So uh, do cheer on the Cougars. It's fun. My voice is fine. (laughs) Others, their voices are not. It's kind of fun. Uh, But it has been a lot of fun this season. The other piece is just to let you know on something that happened uh, last night as as well. Uh, The BC Touring Council is in at this moment kind of finishing off their annual uh, Pacific Contact. It's a kind of festival, uh, workshop kind of gathering together and where spotlights are um, done for artists and that kind of thing. Uh, but they also give out a number of awards. And so I thought I'd share with you because we, we're kind of part of it uh, that Cold Snap, the annual winter uh, music festival here in town, uh, won the top festival uh, in the province uh, yesterday. So if you've ever gone to a Cold Snap uh, event, if you've volunteered, or if you've helped uh, produce or make sure that the shows happen, uh, then there's a little piece that puts Prince George on the map in a different uh, kind of way. It's, it's winning an award for the top, the top festival. I think those are all of the, the spirit lines that we've got for this morning. So uh, we're going to invite you to join together in sharing the peace of Christ with one another. Online, we invite you to use the chat and comment boxes. You use the same language. Uh, here on site, we're going to get up and move around, and we shake hands, bump fists, bump elbows. And if I say, hey, John, would you like a hug? And John says, why, yes, Reverend Bob, I'd like a hug. Uh, then we might even do that, too. Uh, One way or the other. Let's share the peace of Christ with the words, the peace of Christ be with you and responding. Awesome. Let's spend some time greeting one another.
So our gathering song, and the same with to you, our gathering song for the season of Easter is from More Voices 122. This is the day we're going to sing it through twice. We invite you to stand as you're comfortable and able, wherever it is you happen to find yourself in this moment. It's This is the Day. I'm wondering if any one of our kids want to come over and help John light the Christ candle. Here we go. Can you hear it? Can you see it? Resurrection doesn't just describe something. Resurrection is a verb. It's active, not passive. It happens all the time. It's all around us. May this light remind us of the power of resurrection in our lives and in our communities. May it call us to an embodied faith that resists systems of oppression and owns the wrongs of the past, trusting that when we do so, we take the first step in the journey of resurrection. In this place, at this moment, as this community, we look to those who've gone before us, whose story we continue. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Hannah, Samuel, all part of the great story of God. And on such a foundation, we worship together and meet the God who always journeys with us. Please join me in the uh, gathering prayer. Creator God, you have given us such a wonderful world in which to live and grow. Each day brings new wonders if we open ourselves to experience the world around us. Sing this. Yes. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to speak, or John's going to share part of the prayer. Then we're going to sing. Then we're going to speak, and then we're going to sing. So here we go. Here's the first verse. It's different words. Familiar tune. Such a gift for us to enjoy. 
Each day brings new wonders if we open ourselves to experience the world around us. to us are endless, and you provide all that we need. Each day brings new wonders if we open ourselves to experience the world around us. to experience the world around us. and others down. Each day brings new wonders if we open ourselves to experience the world around us. to you this day for each day brings new wonders if we open ourselves to experience the world around us as we ground ourselves in the prayer that's been handed down through our ancestors our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We thought we understood. Death was final. That was it. The great hope was lost, then resurrection. We thought we understood. Power was insurmountable. Empire couldn't be defeated. Fear couldn't be overcome, then resurrection. We thought we understood. God's love had a finite capacity. God's peace was limited only to the chosen few. God's justice was for someone else, then Resurrection. Resurrection is an, an ongoing, ongoing action. action. God's, God's love is limitless. God's peace is available to everyone. God's justice is for you and me. Each of us reflects the spark of the holy, a spark of resurrection, 
a spark that is valued, appreciated, and affirmed as part of the fullness of God. So we're going to join together in singing, Come Let Us Sing. It's Voices United 222. And as we do that, we're going to invite our Trinity kids to join together with CJ and make their way out to their program for this morning. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus shared the parable of the sower and tried to explain it along with Jesus explaining to the disciples why he teaches in parables. It's fair to see this parable of the weeds amongst the wheat as another attempt to explain a similar concept. The parable seems to be saying that good and evil must coexist and that this is normal. More than that, there isn't anything we can do about it. It seems that even those who were hearing directly from Jesus sometimes had trouble understanding what he meant by what he was saying. It's no wonder that we still have trouble almost 2,000 years later. Have you ever wondered if good and evil are opposite sides of the same coin? Is it possible to have one without the other? Have you ever experienced a relationship that was love and hate? Let us listen to the story of our ancestors in this story of our faith from Matthew 13, verses 24 through 29. He put before them a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. In these words and our pondering, the holy becomes known. Thank you. 
I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Let's pray together. Holy One, be near us as we reflect on these ancient words handed down to us by our ancestors. Help us find space within your narrative to weave our own so that ours and yours might combine into a tapestry of faith, rich and varied, textured and real. May we hold the tensions of life together in us, refusing to shift easily to one end or the other. Bless, O oh God, the words of my mouth and the hearts and minds and souls of those that hear them and help turn them into action. Amen. If you reread portions of, of the Gospels, you see this series of kind of parables and then explanations and then a parable with a further explanation and then maybe even a third explanation because it seems like those who, who even knew Jesus, who, who spent time with him, who knew him intimately in that sense, they, they really didn't always get it. So as John said, it makes no wonder that you know, almost 2,000 years later, those of us hearing these stories as they've been handed down through the generations, there are moments where they don't really make sense let alone the shift in time and culture that's happened since then. And so we have this parable of, of wheat and weeds and the temptation, I'm sure, for most of us would have been to just, well, why don't you use some herbicide? Like, why don't you just plant the seed and then spray? Well, there's all kinds of reasons not to do that. We've learned better than, than doing that. I try not to get in trouble with the care of creation team. But there are those temptations to us. But surely, it must have been because you planted bad seed, right? That would be why you've, you've got weeds mixed in. At least that's what the staff believe, accusing of the landowner. You must have cheaped out, right? You bought the cheap seed. You know, you saved a few pennies, that's what you did, that's why we've got this problem. The answer, of course, is no. Wheat and weeds, good and bad, they're opposite sides of the same coin. In some ways, one defines the other. I mean, how do you know what joy looks like? Really, I mean, true, true real joy. Like, tears running down your face, you're so overcome with joy if you've never known any adversity, if you have nothing to compare it against. That's one of the ways that we recognize joy when we experience it because we know the opposite side of that coin. We, we know what defines the other part, the sorrow, the, the challenge, the conflict. It helps us understand and, and appreciate the other side of that same coin. You, you really need one to de define the other. The temptation is to believe that you can't, that somehow it's possible to have a life that is nothing but roses all the time, just rainbows and sunshine and the perfect coffee cup balanced out with the perfect piece of chocolate. Occasionally, you might eat a vegetable, throw in some fruit. It's all good, right? Life is like, ah, oh, yes. You know, it's a 5-0 and o shutout for your team. Just saying, right? But if we're honest with one another, we know that that's not how life works, much like last week, it's, it's the same theme that develops post-Easter. Like, we know that that's not the way it is. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, it gets relativized to your own life and your own context, but, but we've all known some kind of challenge, some kind of adversity. We've all known grief. We've all had someone that we love and care about die belong to us. We've all had relationships that have seemed like the source of all of our being, the, the pure center of the universe, only to fall apart for whatever reason. We've all had moments that we wish just never would end, only to have them stop. 
That's life. The challenge becomes how we meet that adversity. As people who seek to follow in the way of Jesus, how do, how do we respond when the weeds grow up amongst the wheat of our lives? Do we throw our hands up in despair? Do we get beyond frustrated? Do we try to somehow pick up the weeds around the wheat, risking destroying the very thing that we're trying to keep? Or do we wait? Do we wait for the harvest and see what happens then? Do we have a different view of how to respond? That's ultimately, I think, that the strength of, of this parable is this notion that for those of us who are trying to follow in the way of Jesus, there is a different way of being in the world. And we see signs of, of how to live the Christian life all around us, even in the wheat, and even in the weeds. Signs of how we manage those polarities, how we resist the temptation to go, it's all weeds, forget it. And I know that temptation as well as anybody else. There is no good. It's all bad. Really? All bad? All the time? I don't think that's true either. Just like all good all the time isn't true, I, I, I don't think the opposite is also true. Life in all of its wonderful, mysterious awesomeness happens in the middle, somewhere between those two extremes. That's when you start to know who really cares about you and who you really care about. Who finds out you're sick and sends you a card or an email or a text who picks up the phone? Who drops something off on your doorstep? Who sorts through their mitten closet and goes, I don't need all of these anymore? Who makes a special trip to a store and says, somebody else might need a poncho? Doesn't matter weed and weeds. What matters is human beings and how we treat one another. Most of you know that one of my favorite American poets, favorite writers in general, is a person by the name of Maya Angelou. And her birthday would have been uh, this past week. But Angelou once wrote this. I dared to do anything, she says, talking about the Christian life. That was a, that was a good thing. I dared to do things distant from what seemed to be in my future. When I was asked to do something good, I often said, yes, I'll try. Yes, I'll do my best. And part of that is believing. If God loves me, if God made everything from leaves to seals and oak trees, then what is it I can't do? That's the strength of the Christian story. It's not that we ignore the opposite side of the coin. It's not that we ignore the fact that weeds exist, that there are challenges in life, that there are definitely things happening in our society that, that we need to address, that we need to change, that we, we need to confront head on. It's not that we stick our heads in the sand, but it's that knowing that that is there, we also see the wheat. We also understand the power of the wheat and the difference that, that love can make in the world, the difference that we can make in the world. Because after all, as Maya says, if God created everything, then what is it that you and I can't do? I'll add a piece if we choose to do it. May it be so. Amen.
As we transition into some intentional prayer time, we invite you to call to mind the names of people and places and events that you would like to hold in prayer this morning. In particular, we invite you to remember Sylvia and Jim, Colette, Bethany and family, the Blood family, Wendy H. and family, the Irving family, Geraldine O. and Mac W. Let's continue to pray. Holy God, generous and loving, compassionate and forgiving, we bring our prayers for the world. For barren lands ravaged by the climate crisis, we pray for restoration and renewal, mindful of the part we've played in its destruction. Help us in our choices and guide world leaders in theirs. For hurting peoples, we pray for mended bodies, minds and souls, for healing and peace. Help us to show more love and compassion to those in need of that love from you and ourselves and place your healing hand upon them. For war-torn places, of which there are many in our world today, people feeling lost and forsaken, we pray for a lasting peace. Help us to find our voices in speaking up for the voiceless. Guide decision makers to be peacemakers and not warmongers. For ourselves, we pray that we might be beacons of your love in this world, so generously and beautifully made. Help us to play our part in always caring for the world and your beloved children. Hear these our prayers and the ones we've not put to voice the ones that might even reside in places too scary for us to tread. Amen. So for the um, pause of creation, pause for creation, I should say, moment this morning, uh, the Care of Creation team would like to share a short video, which we'll show in a second. And um, it, um, it, its theme is around uh, caring for creation, uh, but, it's, uh, but also that that is, uh, has an element of justice work in it. One of the things that we've learned as a group is that often uh, environmental degradation, um, the effects of the climate crisis affect, uh, the, it affects all of us, uh, those things affect all of us, but they often also affect the poor in, and the marginalized people in a more, uh, in a greater way. And so, in a sense, caring for creation is also justice work. And uh, that theme is picked up by this short video and amongst other things. Oh Lord, our God, we thank you for the earth, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your thoughts higher than our thoughts. We thank you for the earth, for the grasslands, the blue sky and white clouds, but the colours, O oh Lord, of the wind are changing. The green grasslands are brown with desert. The blue sky is yellow with sandstorms. The air is polluted, O oh Lord. The water is contaminated and our fishes die. The land is toxic as chemical waste flow. The climate is changing, O oh Lord, and so must we. So we repent, O Lord, before you, the creator of heaven and earth. You have given us the beautiful earth with all the wonderful creatures and precious living things to live with and to enjoy. Yet, in our greedy, selfish ways, we have dominated and exploited your creation. We have used, overused and abused the earth's resources. We have degraded and destroyed habitats and damaged ecosystems. We repent, O Lord, before you, our Father God, who in love has redeemed your creation and has promised us a new creation where the heavens and the earth will become as one. Give us fresh eyes to see and fresh touch 
to restore the earth's degraded land, rivers and seas. Teach us to tread gently, to speak softly and to live simply with greater love and care so that all may begin to see a new vision of hope. Hope that the grey sky can become blue. Grant us a vision of living hope where we live more, love more. Empower us to care in this climate crisis and lift up your creation as we join in all creation to worship you, our Creator God. Amen. And so we hold in tension the wheat and the weeds, the beauty of creation, and what happens when we abuse it and overuse it and take advantage of it. And then we respond. We do so with our time, our gifts, our abilities, our treasure, our passion, our hands, our feet, and our voice. And in so doing, we seek to embody the kind of world that God has envisioned for us, that God entrusted to us, knowing that it can't happen on our own, can't happen with any one of us, but together, together, that's when miracles happen. And so we join together in prayer. Holy One, bless our responses offered this day. May we bring the best of ourselves to your resurrection story that resonates deep within our very souls. Together as we share our resources, time, and talent, may we share the joy and wonder of Easter and turn experience of death, doubt, anxiety, and fear into new life. Amen. We're going to join together in singing a piece that isn't in our hymn book. It's called I Have a Dream. The tune, however, is familiar, and it acknowledges also that as much as Maya Angelou's birthday would have been last week, um, Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered last week, and so the anniversary of that and the recognition of that as well. It's called I Have a Dream, and as you stand in body or in spirit, we invite you to stay standing for the commissioning benediction and then our sung response after that. It's I Have a Dream.
Christ is risen. Christ has spoken. Christ calls us to bring good news of healing and resurrection to the world. So go. Go to be Trinity United right here, right now. And as we go, may we do so with the blessing of our co-creative God, the love of God shown to us in the person of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ, and with the grace of the Holy Spirit to risk seeing both sides and choosing the side of love and care and compassion in our actions, trusting that we are held in the palms of loving and caring hands. Amen. We sing this one twice. The second time is faster. There's lots of words. got all the words in. <laughs> Friends, thanks for joining us here at Trinity United Church in Prince George. We hope you have a fabulous week, and we see you here again for worship at Trinity United Church. We'll see you then. Bye for now.